Hello everyone, this is Diane from Pretty Pink Cottage. Thank you for joining me today. It is time to start thinking about the next journal. Obviously I've already been thinking about it because I've been collecting this packet of things for a while and it is swans. So we're going to go through it and see what we have, what we've been collecting. I had this in here because I thought it, this would be a beautiful cover, but I don't think I'll be using that because I think I'm just going to make three one signature journals with the cardstock covers. So we'll look into that. Let's look at the paper first, actually. These are cardstock papers, scrapbook papers that I collected. They came from a, a pad of paper at one of the craft stores. I don't remember which one. But I just took the swan pages out and they're heavier. So they would make a good journal cover. So I could just fold it in half and then cut it down and have a journal cover. So I'm going to make three. This one has the green background. I just noticed, I was pausing because I noticed this little, like looks like part of a deer head in the corner, but it's nowhere else on the paper. Isn't that strange? I think this was from a baby girl paper pad and it had swans and it had baby deer and I just took the swans. So this one is a little more abstract, but it does have swans on it. There's three of each. And then this blue one is very elegant looking. So I thought I would do, I don't want this to be on a cover. It's not my favorite one. So I thought I could do uh, one of one of these and two of the other one. I don't know which as the cover. Um, but then there will be one of each pa paper inside each journal or either on the cover or inside each journal. What else do I have? I got this at the flea market earlier this year when I bought all those cat stamps and uh, all the other stamps that I got and put in my shop. I picked this one up for myself. It's the only swan stamp I have. This is a Mrs. Cog's book plate from one of her sets and it has swans on the boats. This is a copy of one of my um, calling cards. It's got some swans on it. And this is a note card. When I did the peacock journal, I did some, before I started it, I did some ephemera that would be for peacocks and swans. So I have these two little cards already done. This was a sticker and this came out of a book. So I'll need to make some more of those. I have more of the, this is a digital paper and I have these pieces that I can use to make some more swan cards. And then these were in my stash and the papers that I'm using are pinks and blues with a little bit of green, like this pretty mint green. I love the, the, the color scheme. So I found these in my stash of ready-made ephemera, handmade ephemera, and I pulled them out because they're the perfect colors. So I have these to use. I'm excited about that because I've had them for a while. This would slide off and it opens up. And then this one just opens. pocket. And this one has a pocket here, a little slotted pocket and a pocket there. I guess I'll need to make a couple more of those if I want to put one in each journal. Um, oh dear, I can't remember the name of this digital. It wasn't specifically a swan digital, but it had a swan tag. And I love the colors. So it has the swan here and here. And I love the colors for what I'm doing. So I printed these and I will be using these as ephemera pieces. Some 
tags and an envelope. The kit that I'm using is from Charm Studios. And I had some ephemera pieces. Yeah, Charm Studio. Love that one. There's a pocket and another pocket. So elegant. And then the pages have, looks like most of them have lines on the front, on the design. And I printed just some colored paper on the back. This got pulled out wrong, so it's not lined up in the middle, and that needs to be covered. It happens a lot with my printer when I'm, only when I'm doing the backs. Even if these pages were dried, they, I, I didn't do them the same day. I don't know why that happens. But I work with it. I make it work, and I, it makes it more decorative when I have to add something to cover up the white strip. So these are the papers from Charm Studio. Some of them are kind of dark. I wouldn't have wanted them that way, but I love the pictures. Love this one. This one has the, the ballerina from Swan Lake. And I like this one coming toward us. Looks like sunset. So they're really beautiful digital pages. I had this, I think this might be from TLC Creates Vintage, I'm not sure, but it was in my, um, you know, my collection of digitals in my computer. So I just printed it four to a page so I could have some journaling cards. It's a really cute design. This I just got recently, and if you remember, it had mud on it because I found it on the ground, and I think she just gave it to me for free, if I recall. doesn't match the color scheme, but it has swans on it, and it's pretty, so I might use it. This came out of the book, not the gnome book, but it is by the same guy, the same illustrations. This is from a vintage ad, or a vintage magazine, for Swans Down Cake Mixes. It was folded up, um, probably in somebody's cookbook, so it's falling apart on the folds, but I can use the Swans Down Cake Mix portion if I want to, and this color is great for the journals. And this is a greeting card, a vintage greeting card. I love it when I find Swan greeting cards. And I don't know if I have more than this one this time. These came out of a book that I purchased about this type of, um, uh, the figurines. There's an image of Swan Fountain Pens advertisement. Some playing cards. This is a Swan, hand-blown glass weather Swan. I remember them. I think there were flamingos too, and it seems like the flamingos dipped down into some, put their beaks in water. This is just a replica of a Better Homes and Gardens magazine cover, sorry. And these came out of a craft book. This is from an antique magazine, The Queen of the Water Lilies, it says. And this came from a kind of old and brittle, kind of thick card piece. I had to cut around cut around it and it was hard to cut it without cracking it. Here's another vintage card. It's bigger, I don't know. I might have to trim it down, but it's so cute. This came out of a book about mythology. This is Apollo. And I do have couple of vintage postcards are the same. Lake in City Park, Norfolk, Virginia. They're not used. This came from a book about birds and here is a little 
poem from a children's book. Swan, swan over the sweet. <laughs> swan, swan over the sea. Swim, swan, swim. Swan, swan back again. Well, swam, swan. So I guess that is a tongue twister. It was for me. And this probably went with it. That's from a vintage magazine. Oh, here's another little vintage card. It's a gift enclosure card. It's so pretty, isn't it? From a children's book. Here's a little metallic um, gift sticker to decorate a gift with. Got a little swan. Wish I had more of that. Another children's illustration. This came from a magazine. I think it was an adverse ad for something. It's just a digital paper. I'm not sure where I got this, but it's a piece of scrapbook paper. That's the only piece I have. I tried experimenting with different sizes of printing my paper so I could maybe make it fit in that uh, Reader's Digest. This is too small, so I might cut that and use it as journal cards. This is um, Gwen Frostick, I believe, from one of her books that I was given. It has a swan on it. This is um, a book called Common Birds of Town and Country, or else this was just the section of a bigger book. Got the swan. And then this is a beautiful big calendar page featuring Ladro porcelain pieces from Spain. So I'll probably just use this half of it because it, it's big. And I think these are the pages that go with it. Yeah, they're the pages that go with that digital set that I showed you with the shabby sheet colors that had a few swan images on it. So that's all the stuff that was in my swan collection. There's a lot there. But I needed to add some pages. If we have time, I'm going to maybe put together some ephemera. So we have these pages. And I have, I pulled a bunch of stuff right here. I have this Cricut cartridge, picturesque, and I have made swan pieces before. So I think I might do that again. So here's the swan. You can make just a figure like that. You have two layers to glue on top of each other. You can make tags. Um, this is a corner piece. I've made that one. And a framework. I think you might be able there's a shadow and a framework. I think you can layer them. And then this one is a card. So it has the silhouettes cut out and then you can fold the card and you can have that little seal if you wanted to. I think that's the only swan piece. There's a wing which I probably wouldn't use. But I think that's the only swan page. But you can get all of these things out of it. So I'll probably do something from that. I have these glassine bags that are in the right color family. So I might use some of those somehow. And I want to decorate these envelopes. I've got all these pink ones that are um, a larger coin envelope. They're three and a half by six and a half. So I can use some of those. And then I have just a couple of these with the big flap. So I might use, might try to do them too. For stationery, I have these pages with the blue and then the white pages, the plain pages. So I could use those. And then this is the computer stationery with the embossed edges. Very elegant, like a swan. In fact, these swirly things are very swan-like. Um, I just pulled some pinks, pink and blue cardstocks so I can make ephemera. And I printed my Mrs. Cog's Majestic Swans. I've used this before. So there are four pages of card cards with beautiful vintage images. Uh, 
For wrapping paper, I have this that matches the colors beautifully. And I have this little piece. I have these thin tracing papers that came out of a book for practicing lettering. And uh, I might stamp, try stamping on them or try coloring them. I'll we'll have to experiment. I have a little bit of tissue paper that would be nice. And this might be a good opportunity for me to use some of these square napkins and placemats. Now that I'm getting more organized and I have less stuff to go through, I'm remembering things like this. And, you know, I'm, I, I can go through things more quickly and pull things out. So I'm really liking it so far, and I'm not done yet. This is from the the vintage um, shelf liners that I got last year and this one has the water lilies which I thought was perfect for the swan journals. I just pulled out some graph paper and these. I only have three of these. These may have been in a Happy Mail but I don't recall but I thought they were so cute and I like the color so I might I have three of them so they might work for my three journals and I have these music papers. They're just plain on that side and then they have the guitar cord grid on that side. And then I have my tablet of of uh, grid paper, colored grid paper. I could use the green and the blue and the pink. Uh, for stamps, I have this that I already showed you. It's the only swan stamp I have. So I pulled things. I'm not going to show you everything I pulled, and I'm sure I won't use everything I pulled. But I pulled elegant, swirly things like this. I have more similar to that. And this background stamp, lacy background. Um, some quotes and words. I just, I didn't even look through them. I just pulled these out, and I'll look through them as I create. And this is just a box of decorative pieces. I'll we'll have to see what's in there and more decorative. And these are labels that you can write on. Might use some of those. And more. There's more decorative type things over here on my stamp tray next to me. So let's find a, maybe a Mrs. Cog's image and make a, make a piece of ephemera. I don't have scraps yet because I haven't cut my paper to size. But I could do something on one of these, maybe. I got these two packages from Amazon. And I pulled some of them out. I forgot how many are in these. It doesn't say on here, but I didn't need this many. So I took some out, and I will be putting a bundle of them in my shop. Like this with her blue ribbon. She just looks very serene and elegant. I think I'll cut her out and use it. I didn't choose fabrics or laces yet. pieces, things that I can use in collages. Um, so I have this part of a doily. That would be nice. This is a corrugated piece of pink. 
I'm just pulling things out. I don't know what I'll use. I'm going to play around and experiment. Pull this out in case I want to use that on the pink bag. I couldn't find my bag. I have a, a pouch just like this full of of um, antique or vintage, I mean, um, wallpaper pieces. And I don't know where I put it in all my organizing. There's a little piece of wallpaper right there. One thing I probably will want to do is use some embossed things. Let's see if I have any that are ready made. I might be able to tear pieces off of that. This one is a frame. It's not embossed very well though. I'm not going to keep that. This one is nice. Anything that's not embossed deeply, I'm just going to toss because I always pass by it and I'm, why should I keep it if I'm not going to use it? I might want a bigger doily than that, actually. Probably don't have a piece of a bigger one in here. I also have this kind of, um, not really embossing, but it's, uh, you know, texture paste through a stencil. I think I'm gonna grab a bigger doily. This one is bigger. Yeah. get too involved. At, at this stage of my crafting, I'm going to grab some lace scraps. With what I'm doing right now, de-stashing, organizing, and all of that, I'm trying to keep things a little simpler. I feel like I need a little blue ribbon or something. And there will 
be something inside of that. So what I think I need is to put her on, maybe because I have the blue and this gray, a piece of silver cardstock. piece isn't too shiny. Some of my pieces that I got at Hobby Lobby are extremely reflective, but I like this one. I think I'll just glue it. moved all my stuff before I started. look for something else for there. I think I, I have something in mind if I have any more of them. Sim similar to that. I also have these. This is what I'm looking for. Put this little bag of vintage things a long time ago. Little bows with appliques on them. And I just used some in strawberry journals, which made me remember them for this. See, it's a little blue, pale blue ribbon with that little sheer applique. Oh, perfect. I think that is perfect just like that. I'm going to cut this edge off because I'm going to glue the bag to a page. And I might as well save that scrap to use for something else. That just looks pretty, just like that. Sorry, I'm not talking much. I was thinking, just thinking, you know? Sometimes crafting is a very contemplative thing. You're not really thinking about what you're doing. 
once you know, like right now I'm just gluing so I don't have to really think so then your mind wanders and you think about other things going on in your life or what you might want to do or what you might want to have for lunch that wasn't what I was thinking about although it is afternoon now 12 19 I wonder if that clock chimed during this video or before I started oh it was during the video <laughs> didn't even notice it. Some of you comment on, on my clock that you like it, so that makes me happy. probably put something plain inside it so it doesn't compete with the uh, images here because it is sheer. I'll put something, oh maybe, let me try one of these. Maybe one of these plain scalloped sheets. Oh yeah, that'll fit in there. And there's one piece of ephemera. I already had a few already made, so I don't think I'll need to make too much. I like that. So I'll have to make a couple more of them for the other journals. I want to try stamping that swan. Did I move it over? Yep, here it is. I think I'll stamp it on white cardstock and then I can back it to one of those colored cardstocks I got out. Got a scrap of white here. I think I'll emboss it actually. Looks like I'm going to have a pink and blue and silver theme because I want to emboss that in silver. throw this paper away. I need it. It's got the lyrics to a song that my sisters and I are singing for my niece's wedding next month. I have to practice that today because we're going to rehearse tomorrow together. So I, mean, I need to make sure I'm ready. I am not a good singer. I mean, I can sing, but I'm not like my sisters. So I'm, I am the pianist. <laughs> When my sisters would sing together, I played for them. Sometimes I sang with them. But my si my niece wants her mother and my other sister and me to sing. So, and there's no piano. They're sing they're, it's an outdoor wedding, no piano. So this is not something I'm used to or comfortable with. Anyway, these are the lyrics for that song. It's called If You Love Her by, I don't have his name here. can't remember his name. Who sings it? Um, the version that we're doing is sung with, in duet with, Megan Trainer. I do, I do know that. Forrest Black, I think maybe his name is. It's a beautiful song and it makes me cry, so I have a hard time singing while I'm trying not to cry. I 
can't imagine how my sister, that is um, the mother of the bride, is going to handle singing that without crying. But she's she's an excellent singer, beautiful voice, and she has had experience doing things like this. And she just kind of just you know learns it well enough that she can distance herself from the words and just sing it without crying and not looking at people. She doesn't look at people while she sings, if it's an emotional piece like that. I have to go. My daughter's here. So you got to see my swan stuff and some of the stuff I'll be making. So have a creative day today. Bye-bye.